tucked between the mountains of southeast Tennessee, along the beautiful Tennessee River, sits Chattanooga. We got to visit for just a short 24 hours, so I'll make my intro quick and we will meet you at the table. I'm Lainey. And I'm Laura Beth. And we are Steel Magnolias. The strength of steel with the grace of a magnolia. We are here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South. And we've got plenty of room at our table. So pull up a chair. Pardon me, boys. Is that the Chattanooga (laughs) choo-choo? I love it. So we have heard some very good jazz over oh the my last gosh, it followed us. 24 or 36 hours, however long we were in Chattanooga. It did follow us. That whole um, time period, I guess, was big for that city. So I, it was playing in a lot of places. I feel like we have been in a 1940s time warp. Yeah. 1930s, 1940s time warp. Yeah. So Well, we, I started to say fine by me just because we like some of those fashions, but I don't want to be in a war time no better be careful what I say we've actually talked about that on our trip because there's a lot of romanticizing around trains that we were around and just the fashion and music of that time period but yes there was also a lot of chaos and unknown happening in the world so it's familiar We have been, yes, we've been in Chattanooga, Tennessee, just very short distance from us here in Franklin. It sits right in the southeast corner of the state of Tennessee, right on the Georgia line. Like you actually kind of, the way that we go from the Nashville area, you dip into Georgia Georgia and then back into Tennessee. (laughs) So silly. I remember as a young child coming to visit you in Atlanta, which we passed through Chattanooga, I just thought that was so cool. We're in Georgia. Oh, now we're in Tennessee. What was also funny was occasionally the gas was cheaper if if you made that one stop. Yes. That was, I don't know why that would be, but. Yeah. Yeah. And now that we're on this topic of meeting you, I remember, or coming to see you in Atlanta, I do remember one major. I already think I know where you're going. Incident before cell phones where the time zone Bit us you're in on the butt again. pretty bad because we didn't know about the time zone change that it was happening right there. Yeah, right there. Don't ever meet anyone in Chattanooga. In that, for that, make sure you've got your time zone of straight. Y'all coming in from different places because, yes, we had a time of whatever, meet you at 2 p.m. Central or Eastern we didn't was not there. defined. Right. So, yes, there was a discrepancy. And that's hard to do pre-cell phone <laughs> years of finding the other person. <laughs> so, anyway, we decided to go to Chattanooga because it was close. We didn't right. have a ton of time. And we were crunched on where to get to that's drivable. So, that's why we picked Chattanooga. But it's a fantastic little city. And we just wanted to share a little bit about our adventures there. So, we had beautiful weather. That Thank helps. Thank you, Lord. That helps a lot. It really does. If you're out sightseeing or even just walking around with a cup of coffee, it sure is nice when it's mild but lovely sunny weather. And weather. You, you just want to walk more. Uh-huh. You want to go, oh, let's just go up this one other block up yeah. here, you know? And so, yeah. You're, Whereas if it's cold or rainy, yeah, like, let's get, just get back. Yeah. So we drove into town, went straight into the downtown Chattanooga area. It was a weekday. And we had a late lunch at a place called Stir, which is right next to and almost connected to the Chattanooga Choo Choo Hotel and Grand Station of where the Chattanooga Choo Choo train at once upon a time came and left from. That was the train depot there. Right. So it's gorgeous. The train station's gorgeous. We did walk through that after lunch, but first I want to tell you about lunch. So (laughs) precious little waitress. It's the friendliness that you hope that you're going to encounter on the road. With the great accent. Sure enough. And these are people that, I mean, they don't have any reason. They're not trying to like do a little song and dance or pony, you know, dog and pony show. Right. They're just being themselves. Right. So she was very hard worker and just precious. Yeah. Loves her job. Hard worker, you can tell. 
So we were led through all the yummy things that they have at Stir, and we landed upon oysters to begin with because I've never had oysters, and clearly that was one of their specialties. Yeah, she said if you like oysters, you definitely need to get some here because yeah. that's something we do well. Now, I wasn't ready or willing to go with raw oysters, which I'm sure some of you that are oyster fans that are listening are going, well, then you didn't really try oysters. Yeah. Okay, forgive me. <laughs> but I did take a step in the direction of at least attempting the oyster family. So we did char grilled. It was just delicious. It was seasoned perfectly. You had had char grilled before. So yes. thank you for recommending that. And they, they brought them with, um, you know, a little wine with shallots in it, like a little wine vinegar kind of shallot. Red wine. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Vinegar. Or horseradish or cocktail sauce. Yes. So. I actually never even ended up touching the horseradish sauce. I or did, the horseradish. I did on or one, the, but I felt like they were tasty enough. They didn't really need anything. But yes. I did kind of like that shallot add. That one okay. shallot add. Yeah. I thought that was yeah. yummy. I felt like that would be like salting the dish before trying it. Like right. I know that's very right. insulting to a lot of chefs. Like could you at least give it a shot before Just you over salt it? Exactly. Yes. So they were very, very good. We split an order of those and then we split an order of a very yummy grilled chicken caprese salad. <sighs> So flavorful because everything was fresh and mozzarella cheese balls, tomatoes. Again, outside on a patio on a beautiful you know, day, a piece of dirt could have tasted <laughs> wonderful at that point. We were hungry and in need of nourishment, but yeah, I do like the way they do their oysters. If there are any way that they're cooked, you have to get either a half dozen, a dozen. That kind of thing. Right. But for the raw, if you just wanted to try them from different places or um, anything like that, they had them, you know, just however many you want. One, yeah. two, three. Yeah. Now, they definitely specialize in a lot of uh, dr- cocktails there. Yes. Hence the name, Stir. I could tell there was a fun nightlife there. They add carbonation to a lot of their cocktails. So we didn't try one. I don't know. have a yay or nay on either any of them but interesting something that they do in house yeah yeah so i would 100 percent recommend if you're in the downtown area for lunch or dinner check that place out it's called stir i will say on a pretty day like we were there it makes you want to be outside we didn't do any outdoor adventure activities oh, while we right. were there. But I want to go ahead and... Outdoorsy hikes yes, and such. I just want to mention as a blanket statement, Chattanooga is a very outdoorsy city. Lots of biking around town. Great water activities. Yes. Paddle canoes. boarding. Canoes. Yeah. Uh, boating, if you even have access to such. Fishing, for sure. If you remember, even on our Southern Adventures episode last (laughs) season, this is where I went hang gliding on Lookout Mountain. So if that's of interest to you, doing something very adventurous and outside, I'll link to the show notes, the Southern Adventures episode, because I went into more detail on that. But yeah, lots of outdoorsy. And um, one of their famous sites is the Sea Rock City Yes. Area. Yes. Where there's in Ruby Falls. Yes. So we didn't do that on this trip. You can, you know, look both of those things up. But Ruby Falls is beautiful waterfall that's in a cave. Okay. Really cool lighting and kids like it, adults like it. It's just really pretty. One of the unique things about Sea Rock City is there's a lookout where... It's supposedly, you know, it's obviously far out, but you can see seven states. I have been to that before. I didn't on this trip. But okay. That's just kind of yeah. unique. Yeah. That the way it sits, you can see seven yes, different I know. That is crazy. States. It's like, it, that would be a great way to see the South. <laughs> just go to that one point, right? You can say you've seen a lot of Southern states. That's hilarious. Well... And, you know, obviously, lots of time you could spend there as much as you wanted to be outside. Yeah. Lots so very family friendly. Yes. Very family friendly. In fact, I feel like we left Chattanooga going, what a family friendly city. Like yes. so much 
that kids would love there. So Great Aquarium. That's another place that we didn't visit on this trip, but that we've both been before right. to the Chattanooga Aquarium. It gets a lot of thumbs up. Lots of fun to be had for kids at the Absolutely. Tennessee. Absolutely. It's called the Tennessee Aquarium. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we, after we had lunch, we walked right next door to the lobby of the former railroad terminal of the Chattanooga Choo Choo. It contains the largest freestanding brick dome in the world. The interior height of the dome is 85 feet. So it's kind of breathtaking yeah, when you first really walk pretty. in. And again, you just kind of feel transported in time. They had jazz music playing. They have some courtyard in the back the of Glenn the Miller terminal. Gardens. And the Glenn Miller gardens are named of course after the glenn miller orchestra who he and his orchestra won the first gold record that was awarded by the music industry for a song about chattanooga the chattanooga choo-choo it became the number one song across the united states on december 7th 1941 and remained at number one for nine weeks on the billboard best sellers charts That's the fun. record sold more than one million copies. So at that time, at that time, that's a lot gosh. of copies. Yeah. So and cute. it's now a hotel. Yes. This yes. Place you can actually stay there, which that location would be so much fun. So much fun. Yeah. Lots and lots of things to do within walking distance. Yes. Park wants lots of things very concentrated together from, you know, lunch things into nightlife in the evening. That's right comedy bar and you know different that's right we didn't it dance was after places so, yeah. line dancing you know just all sorts of different things to do now I will say this when we started planning our trip I was going where's that ho- or the restaurant that is inside the train car downtown because I had in my head yes that there was some place you could eat downtown and I of, did too I, I said, could oh, find yeah. it so we finally asked once we were there and apparently it closed in 2015 and so we weren't crazy. That did exist. But it was too hot. It was too difficult in such a small space to have the kitchen going all the time. It makes and perfect sense. They couldn't seat a lot of people. So it just wasn't functional. So that is, if, if you've heard of that, that isn't open any longer. But lots of other places to see and things to do. So across the street. Right across the street, we walked in a few different shops. hmm there was a place you could do the tasting for Chattanooga whiskey. Yeah. There yeah, was yeah. hot chocolatier. Yes, that's right. That's right. And it's not just hot chocolate. It was a beautiful day. I definitely didn't want hot chocolate. Yeah. But all kinds of truffles and candies and um, yummies. Everything looked chocolate. So yummy. Literally, every, marsh, their homemade marshmallows and lots yeah. of. Um, gifty things if you're not going to be leaving it in the car yeah yeah i know that you was know, part that of was the another problem thing, is we were like, like well yeah. we can't leave it in the car we're officially into weather that stuff can melt in the car i don't know that we'll stay here because this is kind of the season of the year right. in the south where it's going to dip cold again so this is the, the day you're there what do they call this this uh, spring of deception or something, something like that i yeah. have heard that before yeah. so there was also a lovely tea shop wildflower yes every time the door opened and we walked by the Herbs fragrance that came glory. out of that place was so wonderful yeah so fun and then this was very random that i found the next place i want to tell y'all about but so fun and i'm so glad so we did. fun and so right for the right situation so the reason i found this was i was mapping on my phone just in my maps app our route to get around different places and just as it appears when you're looking up real close in a location it shows you all the things, things around, around it and i was like chattanooga selfie museum so of course my interest was piqued and sure enough there is such thing as a selfie museum and i thought this was like the one and only in Tennessee. Did you think it was a museum of already of, famous selfies? I didn't like even think famous. Ellen DeGeneres at the Oscars. That would be really funny. People in there. That would be really funny. But I did think it was photographs. Yes, of selfies. Okay. I didn't even get far enough in thought to think of who. Okay. Famous people would be really fun. But yeah, so the Chattanooga Selfie Museum just opened last fall. Yes. 
And there are other Let's selfie preface, museums. We're not selfie people. We are very not in the rarely selfie. take selfies. No, we are not in the selfie generation. I'm. I'm. I'm certainly not. Yeah, I'm in that odd time frame of being right in between Generation X and Z. Is that right? Are you Generation I'm X? X? You're an X. So I'm a Z. Oh, I guess I'm between a Z and a millennial. Okay. I think is what it is. I don't even know my generation. I'm 40. So if that helps (laughs) y'all. Whatever that means. I was born in 1981. Maybe that helps. So I was, I have that upbringing of non-cell phone, non-Facebook and social media, but it came about when I was around just outside of college. So I still have some youth or young adult years that included a lot of technology, but my upbringing wasn't. So I don't... That's not where your mind goes. I do not side on this one to just jump on the selfie train. But yet we still had fun. We did. At the selfie museum. So thank you so much, Selfie Museum, for Chattanooga, um, for having us because they had it all set up as they do for anybody that comes in just alone with a friend, with a group, for a birthday party, however you want to, however many people you want to bring you just pay by the hour and they have all these different scenes set up little stations if you will with a theme so a soda shop or yeah a jungle sofas with like like a cool velvet sofa with like a real vintage telephone that you can pretend to be on which of course i'm thinking the crowd coming through here do they like, even do know they how even to pick have, that up? Like, do they know how to even pose with this? I was. I was thinking, I want to be a fly on the wall with a group of young girls coming through here. Like, tween age, 12, yes. 13, 14 yes. year old girls coming here through here and just see how they react. Do pose. they even know what a British telephone book, a telephone booth even is? Yeah, because there was one of those. there is one. So, you know, I mean, it was very much geared for younger people but like we're saying we're we still not in that generation and we still had fun and there was you know Taylor there was people Swift older than us there playing doing as well One yes couple that was that's true it was a you know husband wife that were having fun they were yeah and yeah they were older well, lots you, of younger though i'm gonna put you on the spot what was your favorite scene did you have one that was i mean i would are there like 15 16 scenes there was a lot i would say there are 15 or 16 they're smallish but they're enough room for you and a surprising to me is uh of the pictures we got i really liked the jungle you did i really liked the spray paint the spray paint when i put up on facebook or on instagram yep uh and those weren't my two favorite as we're walking through that's so funny so it's sometimes it's even you don't know how it's gonna photograph that's true does that make sense that's like true. the colors are fun or that's so true anyway so i like I know you do kind of feel like you want a wardrobe change and yeah you, and i haven't seen all of them i bet you there's girls that, that we've come done. with different outfits oh goodness, if they I know like too. what they're getting into i bet they change i'm just guessing i don't know I can totally see that. <laughs> right? Because yes. they're going to want to look different. But they have, if you're familiar with different technology of, you know, photography and selfies, there's such a thing as a ring light, yes. which is just, as it sounds, a ring, like a circular light that helps project light on your face yeah. for taking photographs. And so they have those set up all over the museum to make sure you're getting the right lighting so i had fun i just i felt like it was a, just a good outside of the box sort of thing to absolutely. do absolutely and i could visualize some groups having so much fun like a 12 year old birthday party yeah, yeah i just think that would be such fun yeah for some girls and then you're actually walking away with a lot of fun photos exactly as you're party favor exactly or yeah right and so we did hear that they do have some special events from time to time so we're going to link in our show notes to their website but i think they have some 21 and up over 21 events where alcohol is served yeah like a little i don't happy know happy hours or sip, something sip and selfie kind of yeah moments but yeah so that was really fun and very 
Very different. And apparently these exist in some other cities. I've never heard of this. But yeah. She said, oh, there's one in Nashville. I was like, oh, news to me. The only time we get out yes. is to go do podcast to events. To get content for, you, for y'all. <laughs> Thank you for getting us out of the house. My first selfie museum. Oh, my goodness. Now, you mentioned if you had kids with you, a couple of things to do. If you were outdoorsy, things to do. Yes. I also believe for a history buff, Chattanooga has things to offer. Yes. For one, there was a large Civil War uh, battle, the Battle of Chattanooga. And there is some sort of a um, digital diorama battles show Mm -hmm. that a history buff might enjoy to learn more about that battle. And we also heard a cool story um, on something that we did later we'll tell you about, where there was a uh, locomotive chase Oh yeah, in the Civil, Civil War time that went from Kennesaw to Chattanooga. Yeah. And for a history, a Civil War history buff, they're probably like, of course, you know that story, right? Which I didn't. No. <laughs> We're like, but, um, actually, no. <laughs> But one thing I thought was really interesting was the Union soldiers that stopped that heist, if you will, in Chattanooga were the first recipients ever of the Medal of Honor. That's amazing. And so there is the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center in Chattanooga. So we didn't include this in our 24-hour trip, but I do think history buffs would enjoy looking a little more deeply into the Battle of Chattanooga and that Medal of Honor Center as well. Yes, so good. I'm glad you mentioned that. I feel like the what we're doing is we're giving you some An very, overview. very quick highlights and bullets, but you could definitely spend a good a weekend, weekend, three-day weekend for sure. in Chattanooga and have full calendar or agenda of things to do. When I think of Chattanooga, maybe it's because of the Chattanooga choo-choo, I think of trains. Yes, and that time period even Yeah, for me. so when There you, was a hotel we didn't go to, but a friend of mine told me she stayed in the Reed House. Okay, yeah, that was what it was. And yeah. it looked like, when I looked at the pictures, very Art Deco, very uh-huh. um, 20s, 30s. Yeah. It looked beautiful. And so, I don't know, that's what I think of. Yeah. When yeah. I think of Chattanooga. So I initially thought, okay, I want to build our agenda actually around a train ride. I want to get on a train. It doesn't have to be all day. I just want to go on a little train ride. And so that's what we did. We got in touch with the Tennessee Valley Railroad. And they are a nonprofit museum and organization that operates uh, historic and scenic excursions all throughout southeast Tennessee and north Georgia. And they've been doing this for over 60 years. Yeah, it was 61, I think. I think it was 61, yeah. So we got to take a ride on what they call their Missionary Ridge Local Ride, which is a just under an hour of a experience. It's a very short ride. It is, but it was not a big time commitment either. Right. So if you had a kid with you or somebody that tires easy, they yeah. can handle this. Oh, this was perfect. This was a perfect grandparent excursion in <laughs> fact we saw a lot of that yeah it was so sweet we were With like the grandkids oohing and aweing over the grand one little grand set of grandparents said did you are you excited about your surprise <laughs> to the little boy they had yeah so we got to cross several different four bridges we went through a pre-civil war missionary ridge tunnel which they reminded us that dynamite didn't exist pre-civil war So this tunnel was created without dynamite. Let that sink in for a minute. So crazy. Because it was long. We had a 25-minute layover after our little 15-minute ride out where they showed us the turntable. Which I have wondered how this works before. When I think of turntable, I think of records, as do you. DJ. But this is just the way that they, yeah, they spin the locomotive around to get it set for the train to go. back the other direction and it was fascinating it It really really was was. so we had a great experience again great weather they have longer excursions yes and you can i'll link to their website in the show notes so that you can see their calendar and see how the tickets work for each of those rides i will say they have a very what looks like a very playful kid focused ride which is the 
day out with Thomas the Train. So it says ride, play, and stay all day. It is throughout April and May, and it's an all-day event, nine to six. Not all day on the train. No all day event though. The They're place. creating an experience. Yes. So dayoutwiththomas.com. I'll link to all that in the show notes. But looked really sweet. Great gift shop too. Oh my goodness, it's not very big, but it was good stuff. Yes, trains, train souvenirs, kids goodies t-shirts uh, yeah all good prices hats. good prices conductor hat yes <laughs> so cute and then we got to have lunch on the grounds we had our chicken salad sandwich and sweet table. tea while we listened to a little bit more of their jazz Which playlist so fun and they have the museum too so included with your pass is a museum where you can walk around and just it's see also small not yeah. take long but just a little bit more in-depth information. Again, we were just hitting the highlights. Right. You know? And so. this, this museum is just since they have owned this property in 1961. So you're yes. looking at things they've done since that. Yeah. And it was interesting to see, you know, pricing of writing in mm-hmm. 1975. Yes. Or China that was used on the dinner cars. Yes. And uh, lots of different little things like that yeah yeah so then we hit the road it was already time to go back home but tell everybody what we did uh, just kind of on our few stops on the way home okay so well can I even mention a couple things we didn't stop but we have before yes okay so if you're leaving Chattanooga headed to Nashville or if that's part of your route yes one of the things we always like to mention is in South Pittsburgh oh yeah there is a lodge cast iron outlet If you need cast iron, it's a great place to make a stop. You can get um, a little bit better deal, especially if you're willing for something to have a flaw. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's even even marked down more. That's true. But even if you don't need cast iron, if you enjoy kitchen gadgets or need them for a gift, it's full of good stuff. Yes, this This, is your place. They have all the green egg stuff. Uh, just a lot of kitchen and grill yeah. goodies. I got my Dutch oven from there and I've used it ever since. It's yeah. weekly. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. good, good stop. And then we didn't stop here this trip, but we have before on the Tracy City Mont Eagle. Yes. Stop. Yes. There's the Dutch made bakery. I can't even remember how old it is, but it's very old. They still use some of the original equipment. And just a fun stop if you want to take some yummies with you Mm -hmm. in either direction. Yep. That's true. It's a good stop. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Then I had asked Laura Beth if we could stop in Sewanee. Yes. Synonymous with the University of the South. Right. So we made that stop and enjoyed that exit. Gorgeous campus. Absolutely stunning. Not real big, again, no. depending on, I mean, I guess it's all relative, what campuses you've seen. But it is just beautiful. Again, it was a lovely day, so nice to walk around. Mm-hmm. And it was a Friday, so the kids were having lots of oh. fun on campus as well. Blaring music, throwing frisbees. It was party time, yeah. <laughs> we were remembering the... I was like, you guys have no you idea. Have no <laughs> idea how uh, this season of life is so wonderful. <laughs> Anyhow... Uh, there was some fun shops in Sewanee. Sure were, yeah. There's yeah. a little store called uh, the Lemon Fair. Yes. The Lemon Fair. Yes. Just a cute, lots of little home gifts and a few toy gifts and uh, just a cute mm-hmm. little shop. But mm-hmm. I think it's been there since 1970 or something. That's crazy. Yeah. Some kind of Amish hippie store that we didn't <laughs> stop st- at, if but we would have if I we wanted had to more stop. time. Yes, just little things like that. Bakeries, yeah. coffee shops. It's a cute stop if you need to get out and get some fresh air. Our favorite though was the inn. Yes, I wanted to snuggle up and 
sit outside and overlook the mountain for an extended amount of time there. But. We need to have a Steel Magnolias gathering sometime yes. at the Sewanee Inn. If y'all are willing to meet us on Mon Eagle, we have found a place. It is just beautiful. I don't know how much the rooms are, but it's so pretty. Fireplaces everywhere. It seemed like we saw at least three or four and they were all going. That adds so much. You don't even need to be like looking for warmth right just ambiance that adds so much golf course right behind it yeah rocking chairs just all things yeah. glorious yeah yeah i mean you're up in elevation so it's just beautiful Pretty landscapes and... all all around i want to do an event there yeah put that on our dream big list y'all gonna come if we do one <laughs> <laughs> and just like that we were back home right it was quick but it was fun so if any of that interests you i'd recommend checking out chattanooga it's got a little something for everyone it really does for the whole family or for the individual or for the girls not at the selfie museum (laughs) yes girls not at the (laughs) selfie museum that's right yeah go unleash your inner child at the (laughs) selfie museum (laughs) oh well we had fun thanks for uh just coming along with us for those of you that follow us on instagram you've already been seeing some highlights and if you don't follow us go ahead and do that at steel magnolias podcast all right laney time to unpack our bags well we've been to the episcopal university i bet they say occasionally peace be with you oh and also with y'all